It's just in game. Okay, good. Well, um, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in to the re recording. Today I'm super excited to talk with Dr. Sandy Elveth. Uh, Sandy uh, has many, many levels of experience with optometry and digital marketing. And we're going to be talking about the new Facebook changes. Uh, Facebook Zero, some people are calling it, which, which could have big implications for your Facebook page. So I'll introduce Dr. Sandy Eveleth. Uh, she's an optometrist, eye care practice consultant, and digital marketing strategist. And she loves helping eye care professionals grow their practice with the latest digital marketing and business development strategies. She's been practicing optometry for over 27 years in almost every setting possible, from owning a thriving practice in privately for more than 15 years, or uh, to working in corporate optometry and also working for an ophthalmologist too. Uh, she holds a Doctor of Optometry degree from the New England College of Optometry, uh, where she was valedictorian. And <laughs> that's very cool. And a Bachelor Thank of you. Science degree from Boston College. In 2009, Sandy founded Kiss Your Web, LLC, and KISS stands for Keeping Internet Solutions Simple. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's a great way to, to, uh, to get your practice up and running as a web design and digital marketing firm. And Sandy's also a WordPress Elevation Certified Digital Business Consultant. So thanks so much for joining us, Sandy. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Lee. I appreciate it. It's, it's great. We just mentioned how uh, off camera there that it's great we finally get to meet each other. We've um, kind of been supporting each other in this digital marketing space as optometrists. So it's great to finally meet you face to face. Oh, that's that's awesome. It's, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank um, you. Yeah, just I'd be interested to hear how did you get into optometry in the first place? What Oh, good question. Sure. I was actually, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up, even when I was in um, undergrad and started working for a an ophthalmologist that my cousin worked for. And he had an optometrist there. And I thought, hey, that seems like a pretty neat profession. So I applied to the one and only school that was in my uh, state. And I figured if, if I got in, it was meant to be. So the rest is history. Um yeah, it's been great ever since. Like you said, I've been I've been doing a lot of different things in the profession and um, am now doing a lot more consulting for optometrists as well. So it's it's exciting. I, I just love seeing other people do really well in business and in their practices and and just enjoy this digital marketing space and got into it after I realized that um, as a private practice owner, I needed to you know kick our marketing up. A notch. When I came out of corporate optometry, um, it was, you know, you don't just build it and they will come. It's you have to get out there and hit the beat and and get patients because they're not going to automatically follow you just because you stay in the same town. With your journey with optometry, did you start at, uh, so you started at an ophthalmology practice or did you start no I, I when I first coming out of school I was in a, a corporate location did that for a couple of years and then went inside as the main doctor with my partner as um, you know the you know the optometrist there and it was a seven day a week location and then decided after a few years that just wasn't why we did this so we went in and, and started cold started our own practice cold and again, thought that most of our corporate patients would follow us, but had some rude awakenings with that as well. Okay. Um, so it, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's been a long haul. So did that for 15 years, grew the practice to almost seven figures. And, um, you know, it was, it was a nice neighborhood, quiet practice, but we did very well for, for, um, you know, for the demographic. So, and then back into corporate optometry and now doing more consulting. That's awesome. It's great to be able to give others a hand along the way. Absolutely. Um, so just 48 hours ago, Mark Zuckerberg released yes. a, big, a very big announcement. Normally, Facebook has small incremental changes. Yes. Uh, but Mark's put this idea out that people aren't interacting enough on Facebook. Right. That people right. are scrolling through too much. So what what's the news that... that um, that, that he shared um, that we need to talk about. 
Well, I mean, it's it's long, and we can leave a, a link and actually use his words. But the but the gist of it is that for companies that have built Facebook pages and built a fair you know fairly good following or just starting out, that Facebook is no longer going to be pushing organic um, content on those pages. To- the regular. He's basically trying to make it a a good user experience for for all of us, you know, personally. So, you know, he thought that it's just kind of getting gummed up with too much advertising and marketing and not enough interacting, that the people to people interactions were starting to to go away. So I think it's a good move in one respect. I think it's a scary move for some businesses. But I'll tell you that most of the experts in this space will basically say, look, if you're putting out good content, yes, the reach may be going down. But if you're getting good engagement and getting people to comment and comment back and forth, that's the big thing is you want to push out content where people are actually talking to each other, not talking to the owner or talking to the page. So as long as you're you're pushing out content that's getting good engagement, you're still going to get fairly good reach. I think the good news is that I was a little nervous about it first, but I think the good news is that Facebook advertising, which is which is a really good way to market your practice, is not going to be affected. Facebook has actually come out and answered some questions to the experts and said, no, Facebook advertising is not going to be affected. Of course, you know, that stands to, to be seen. I think what might happen is because our organic reach in the Facebook pages is going to go down. There's going to be more competition in buying those ads. You know, it is relatively inexpensive to pay for Facebook advertising. We may see that that's going to become more expensive in the future. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I know watching this very closely that Facebook page reach has been going down steadily for probably the last six to 12 months. So, you know, it, it, we've had to make other efforts to try to get people to see our posts, you know, our practices posts. So I'm not, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not as panicky as when this first came out because of course a lot of people are going to make you panic thinking, you know, that, that, uh, you know, this is the end and Facebook zero and Facebook apocalypse. Certainly I don't think that's going to happen because Facebook is in the business of being in business. So of course they need to have people hanging around. Um, and they, you know, they get a lot of their, their, their income from Facebook dollars, Facebook advertising. So it sounds like although this is a a big announcement, it sounds like it's just a continuation of the journey of Facebook refining their news feed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, You know, and some of the advice that I give and I'm I'm giving heavily and I gave before this this information came out is to do exactly what you're doing right now is to do Facebook live broadcasts. Facebook has... um, Obviously, you know, it's, it's when you look at any of the numbers or you do any of the analytics, it's very evident that Facebook is pushing out anyone that's doing Facebook live broadcasts. I, I think that what you're going to see is, well, now everybody thinks, hey, I've got to get on Facebook live and start pushing out some of this from our pages. Uh, the problem is that might get a lot of noise as well. So they're saying, well, it's not going to just be content that we may push out like Facebook Lives. It's going to be Facebook Live where people are starting to interact. They want to see that people are engaging in Facebook Lives. So there's going to need to be a lot of prep work and letting people know that you're doing a Facebook Live broadcast, you know, inviting people to join in the conversation without using something called clickbait, which uh, Facebook is going to heavily penalize. Um, and clickbait is saying something on your live broadcast like, hey, please comment below and, you know, we'll give you a free pair of sunglasses. Um, that that will be heavily penalized. That That's not going to happen anymore because I think people are just tired of seeing all of this marketing out there and, and they're listening. Um, so... You know, that's the big recommendation that I have for practices and, and, and we can talk about some ideas of what we can do for something like that, um, you know, in a few minutes or so, but. Yeah, sure. The, the newsfeed itself, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or any other network, we're used to scrolling through and it's sure. so easy to, to keep, you know, look at one post, flick to the next. Um, and it seems like the, the interaction that Facebook wants us to get uh, does require a lot more effort. 
know, for someone to like something, that's pretty easy. But it sounds oh, like sure. you want a lot more uh, quality engagement than just a like. Well, it, absolutely. It's it's not just a like, and it's not just even a comment. It's conversation inside the post. So if if you do come up with you know some good content, you, you're talking about something that either you know maybe a new test that you have or a new specialty that you have, or something that's really hitting a problem that your you know prospective patients or your patients have, then that. We're hoping that that garners conversation. And again, it's not conversation just talking to you as the page owner, but it's conversation where people are talking to each other. And, and it's not even just a quick comment like, Hey, you know, thank you so much for that wonderful tip about, you know, vision therapy. It's, it's more conversation where two people are talking to each other saying, you know, Hey, it might be a mom, you know, tell me more about your son's outcome for vision therapy and then the mom gets in there and starts talking about you know her 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 child's vision therapy results so it it, it's i mean it's it's not going to be easy but it's you know it's really getting that engagement and top quality content they also don't want you just pushing out content on a scheduled uh you know on a schedule that a lot of page owners are doing small business and large businesses are doing is they just plug in content and they stick it into a software that schedules the content and just pushing it out there they are going to be very aware of that and they're going to decrease your reach to your patients and prospective patients if you do that so it's it's not just throw up these posts just to have quantity they are looking for quality and they would they would prefer that you decrease the amount of posts that you do um they also it sounds like from you know people like mari smith and mike stelsner of social media examiner that don't even put links to your blog you know this is something we were taught for years is you know to drive traffic to your website is to put links to your to your blog posts and they're of the mindset that no that's don't do that We've known that you don't want to put links to YouTube on your Facebook page because <laughs> Facebook's biggest competition is is Google and uh, Google owns YouTube. So, you know, it's it's that sort of organic conversation and content that that needs to be incredible quality and needs to get engagement. Now, having said that, I still believe that organic reach of your Facebook page is is going to be dying off. Um, in order to stay in front of patients and prospective patients, you're going to have to start paying for advertising. But even in that, you want to make sure it's good quality ads. For sure. And just going back to what you were saying about Google, it sounds with Google, Google's like uh, it puts patients at the, at the center and you, it's fine. they can find out their own healthcare interests. They can Google optometrists. Uh, right, optometrist Los Angeles. Uh, it's it's putting them at the center uh, from a Google perspective, but it sounds like Facebook's uh, Facebook's copying a similar mindset as well. Well, that that's funny that you said that because I almost posted something about that. It almost sounds like where Google was getting very smart with their algorithm and cleaning out all of that bad what they call search engine optimization on websites where people were just stuffing their websites with phrases that they thought would get them to the top of Google. Well, Google started to penalize that. And it absolutely, it sounds like Facebook's doing the same thing. Is they're really trying to get back to what was Facebook originally meant for? And it was meant for the personal interaction, people to people interaction. And they've seen that that's been dropping off. And because of that, they they want to get rid of the stuff out of the news feed that's slowing down that people to people interaction. They they even came out and said that they, you know, they I don't know if it was the right verbiage or if they implied it that it's not healthy. You know, they've done studies and it's not healthy for for us not to be interacting with each other. That that was the original intent of Facebook is to have this connection, people to people connection. It's hard to see those photos of. Um uh, you know, the people on exotic holidays on the beach somewhere, and yeah, you, you're not there. So <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so, um, and that's another whole subject altogether, right? Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, but they they are they're trying to get back to hey, we made this for friends and family, and let's 
let's talk that way. Let's have those conversations. Um, I think digital marketing as a whole, it kind of put a barrier, even though it was, it was for us to connect and get closer together. I think it, it started to be this thing where we are staying at home and, and not connecting with each other. So I think it's, Hey, let's, let's use these platforms to get connected. I think digital marketing, in fact, I just was interviewed on a podcast that digital marketing in 2018, and you're going to see a lot of, uh, digital marketing gurus talking about this thing, making connections. I want to make sure I'm still connected. I know yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm talking about yeah, connecting, yeah. but it's, 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 it's going to be, you know, it's, it's, it's be authentic, be transparent. These are words that we throw around very loosely, but it's be yourself. People want to know who the owner behind the company is. Um, you know, content has to be, it, it, it has to be a given that the content is amazing and valuable and that you're adding value to somebody's life and to some, you know, to the experiences that they're having. And I think for, for, you know, a few years now, the digital marketing was just getting, um, um, you know, and we were getting inundated with with sort of this barrage of advertising that we we're trying to stop on television. You know, we're clicking through these ads, mm-hmm. so it's the same thing on the news feed. We're flying by the ads. So, you know, we we need to figure out number one. We need to figure out who our audience is, and we need to give them content that they want to have. Ask them. Don't be afraid to ask. Either your, your patients, your customers, your clients, the current ones, or go out there and do some surveys and find out, you know, who your, what your target market really wants from you and give it to them. It's that simple. Sure. You know, it's, it's caring about your audience, caring about your patients, caring about, you know, what they're going to, how you're going to help them. I like that word caring. That's, that's a great, great summary. It just shows, yeah. I mean, because we, we are already good at caring for patients in the office. So, uh, it should continue like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, this is, you know, all of the usual marketing 101 kind of things that we do when you own a local business, get involved in your community, you know, you step away from the computer and get out there and, and again, show that you care about where you live, show that you care about what the patient's day to day lives are about, um, you know, help them. We find out what their eye care needs out there and find out how we can help in the community as well. Uh, and, and again, there are ways to do that online that you, you know, showing that you are involved in the local community. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, and people can also, if they've got an existing Facebook page, they can also dive into some of their insights as well to give them some ideas. Oh, sure. You, you mean the, like the analytics or the, the, oh, sure. And again, I think, I think that may make them sad if they start, start looking at some of that. Um, and find out, yes, find out what's working. Is there, is there, you know, realizing, okay, now I have to get some good content. I need to get some interaction from my patients, from my current patients or people that have liked my page. Find out what posts are getting the most engagement and what aren't. It's pretty easy, even in the posts themselves, though, you know, you'll be able to find out what kind of reach that you're getting. It, it's actually called reach. That's why we're using this verbiage. But, um, you know, and there's a lot of information online that will help with, with giving you ideas of what, what gets better reach. I think it's going to behoove all of us to watch closely what some of the experts are talking about, you know, there's some people that are doing this all day long. They're, they're, they're testing, they're trying things out. We as, you know, private practitioners or practitioners in the, in the profession don't really have time. We're taking care of our patients. So we don't have a lot of time to, to watch that. But if you're doing it yourself, there are ways to find out if, uh, you know, if what you're putting out there is, is, is getting paid attention to her. But, but again, I, you know, and I, not to sound doom and gloom, I just, I really think that organic reach is going to be very, very difficult. I think more and more we're going to find that if we do want to use Facebook to market our practices, we're going to have to purchase some advertising, um, or get out there in front of the camera and do some Facebook live. But again, even at that, if it's just organic and you're not purchasing advertising for that, it's going to be difficult to get in front of your audience. Do you think, um, I like how you mentioned community before and promoting the community. Do you think that having, uh, for an idea for optometrists with groups, 
Do you think yes. that, um, that groups that that optometrists starting a, a local group, even for allied health? Absolutely. Absolutely. That, I mean, that's kind of the, the third arm in all of this is, you know, how to improve organic, you know, still do Facebook as the third thing is, is to have groups. Um, and I, I don't think it's too difficult. You can start with your current patient base is, you know, and you, and also look for general interests that are in the community. If there's something that the community is excited about, you can certainly invite people from that, you know, from another group or from the community into your group. But, that's going to be another way that Facebook is going to allow you to have a lot of reach. You're going to get a lot of engagement typically inside a group. If they've joined your group, whether you've invited them or they've found you and they've, you know, asked to be part of the group, you know that they're genuinely interest, interested. And, and this has been going on, I would say, probably for the last six months is that engagement on Facebook pages has gone down as engagement in Facebook groups has gone up. And and you and I know that as being part of, you know, optometry groups, whether they're business related or diagnosis and treatment related, there's a lot of engagement. We're part of groups that are 30,000, 40,000 strong. Um, I know that there are local groups out there that have 10, 20, 30,000 people in it. And even if they're not all active, there's a a good number of people that are getting the information that you're, you know, sending out into the group. Uh, and, and again, I think Facebook is going to reward that at least for now because they know that that's a place that engagement is pretty high. Again, down the road, who knows? You know, if, if that starts to look spammy and, and, you know, starts to, to be a problem, then something will probably happen there as well. But, you know, keeping in mind, and, and then there's the chat bot marketing. That's where you're marketing through, um, direct messaging. There's a lot of conversation about that. Um, you know, good, bad, or otherwise, uh, again, find out what your particular patient demographic is interested. If, if it's, you know, a demographic that's not even on Facebook, it, it's not going to do any good. None of this conversation will do any good because they're just not paying attention there. But find out if, if your patients would enjoy getting messages through Facebook and you can set up automatic messaging that if as long as you're transparent and and let people know that it's not you at the moment that there's actually a robot doing it for you but you can set up some very personal messages that can go out through using chatbot messaging the so optometrists could put some of their their most frequently asked questions on the on the chatbot and absolutely is that absolutely good? Oh, absolutely. You know, frequently asked questions. Um, there, again, there might be some new services that you're offering. There might be, you know, new staff that might be popular for the area that, that, you know, a lot of people would like to know about. Um, you know, there's so many different things that, that you could do. Again, taking it through chatbot, but also taking it to your Facebook live ideas for that as well. Yeah, for sure. It's really building on that, that foundation. uh... It is. And the funny thing is, and you and I know this is, is this is marketing 101. This is the only thing that's changed is we've added this layer of digital. You know, this is the same kind of, of, you know, integrative and, and ethical marketing that we should have been doing offline before digital marketing ever came, came, you know, to fruition. So, so care first, um, find out what your audience wants. Uh, again, current prospective patients think about what that ideal patient would look like if 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 you unfortunately don't have an ideal patient in, in your practice which i'm sure all of us do um you know create one what what write down what would their age be what what's their you know what are what are the kind of things they get involved in what would be some of their eye care problems and then tailor your content to that tailor your marketing to that find out where they hang out online I'm sure it's not just Facebook. If it's a if it's a young demographic, they're probably on Snapchat or Instagram. So don't limit yourself. Um, the other thing I say is is video is is huge, um, not just on Facebook but on YouTube. And as I always say, you know, to to people that don't realize this, I ask them what the number one search engine is, and everybody knows it's Google. And then what's the number two search engine? And they don't know, and it's YouTube. And of course, Google owns YouTube. So have a YouTube channel. Um, you know things like that, all kinds of ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for for sure, and that's that's why it's great to great to um, to to keep up with people like yourself to to stay at that leading edge. Um, yeah, and keep absolutely. 
Yeah. Absolutely. And and you do a great job too. We really really appreciate your you know, you're very generous with your information. You're 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 generous with lifting other people up as well, and we appreciate that. Uh, thanks so much. I appreciate that. You bet. Just this this January, you've launched um, a new consulting service for optometrists. Could you tell me a bit about that? Sure. Well, it's it's been a little bit longer than that. I probably and I and I I kind of misled you when I was talking about this earlier, but um, officially, drsandyeveleth.com consulting. I've probably had it for about a year, but I've been consulting other optometrists for, you know, ever since I've been in practice. I've, I've had so many optometrists come to me, how did you start cold? You know, how did you build a thriving practice? So a lot of that information went out freely and I realized that it's that's some pretty good information. And I had hired consultants in the past, so I I, I know, you know, I'm, I'm privy to that information as well. So for at this point, yes, starting now, starting yesterday, starting last year, I've got this um, consultancy business, and you can find out more about it at drsandyeveleth.com. That's a mouthful, so I'll, I know that you've tagged me probably in the uh, in the um, in the Facebook Live, and I'll I'll give you the uh, link. I do have a special offer for your uh, viewers that um, you know I give them an hour of my time, and I spend probably a half a day researching all of their digital marketing footprint, and then I end up giving them a recorded um, session of our session together and a marketing plan. Uh, within a couple of days, they get that as well. So I love it. I, I, as you can tell, I'm very passionate. You've been able to pick up on my passion in the uh, Facebook groups when I talk about and try to help other optometrists grow their practices. And um, you know, I'm I'm here to help. Yeah, that, that's that's awesome. It's been been great to have to have someone to lean on that in that way. Um, thank you. Yeah, well, thank you so much for for coming on, giving on your Saturday to uh, absolutely. Today. It's it's been a bunch of fun, and um, yeah, look forward to to staying in touch with you and and all the things, good things. Absolutely. I'll, and I'll keep you posted. I'll I'll um I'll drop some any new information in your Facebook page as as I as I find out what this Facebook Zero is all about. <laughs> that sounds great. Well, thank you so much again. It's been wonderful. You bet. Same here. Thank you, Lee.